on number 14. The rational function has a higher degree in the denominator than it does in the numerator. So we call this bottom heavy. And so bottom heavy graphs always have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And x-intercepts, or excuse me, not x-intercepts, but the vertical asymptote is always where the bottom is equal to zero. And so if we factor the left side and set each factor equal to zero, we get x equals negative four as a vertical asymptote, and then we'll get x equals four. So we're getting two vertical asymptotes. For a hor and the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. So this is an asymptote as well. Now we can cross the, as the horizontal asymptote. You won't cross the vertical asymptotes, however. Again, these are guidelines and most likely our graph will just be in this upper part or in the lower part. In the center it might be um, some sort of parabola looking figure or something tr increasing or constantly decreasing. So to find out, let's first look at our y-intercept by letting x equal zero. And if x is zero, we get f of zero or y is equal to the opposite of 2 over 0 squared minus 16. So this is negative 2 on top, 0 minus 16, negative 16, so it comes out positive 1 8. So when x is 0, y is positive 1 8, just barely off the 0, 0 point. Then to find an x-intercept, what we do is we let y equal 0, and so making y equal to 0, we find out that if we cross multiply, we get negative 2 equals 0, which is a false statement, and it has no solution. So we have no x-intercepts. So what that means is we will never cross this x-axis. So this graph doesn't cross, so most likely this is going to be traveling up because we can't cross over and then we have to test some values on either side of the asymptotes. So to the left of negative 5 we could use something like negative 6. So we would make a chart of values or you can just put this in your grapher and if we plug in negative 6 we get the opposite of 2. I'm plugging it into the f of x negative 6 squared is 36, take away 16 is 20, so we get negative 2 over 20, which is negative 1 tenth. So at negative 6, it's a real tiny negative number. So since we don't cross the x-axis, we must be in this lower corner. And likewise, if you plug in positive 5, you're going to get 25 minus 16, you'll have negative 2 ninths. And so again, the graph is underneath the x-axis and it has to stay under the axis because we never cross the x-axis. So that's the graph. We're down in the lower corner and it's somewhat parabola looking here and then down in the corner here. And we should plot some points. You can just use your grapher to make that uh, more accurate, which it, it really is a pretty flat graph when, when you graph it more accurately. It, it's, it's flatter. Okay, on the slant asymptote, so the last type of rational function is this top-heavy one, and there's no horizontal asymptote, but still the vertical asymptote is where the denominator is zero, so that is x equals eight. And then to find the slant asymptote, you just take the numerator and divide it with long division by the denominator. And in long division, you take the first term divided by the, the first term of the a dividend and you divide it by the first term of the divisor and you get an x. 
for your first term of your quotient. And you multiply x times x, x squared, x times minus 8, minus 8x. Draw the line, change the signs. And then this is a positive 12x minus 8. 12x divided by x is positive 12. And we get 12x minus 96. Draw the line, change the sign. And this is an 88. And that is the remainder. But if we just let y equals the quotient with the remainder left off, that is our slant asymptote. And that is answer choice C. So on number 15, the answer is C.